church and our online family and friends. Thank you once again for joining us on this morning. We pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. I will rejoice in the Lord always. Our scripture comes from 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 in the New English Version. And it reads, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. As we approach another end of the year, another Thanksgiving, I just want to say thank you, Lord. I don't want to ask God for anything right now. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I thank God for making a way. Despite everything that has happened in the year 2020, God has been good. Sometimes we get so caught up in complaining and having our own opinions about one thing and another thing. But if we just step back and think, we know that God is in complete control and nothing gets past him. God has been good. I thank God for keeping me when I couldn't even keep myself. I thank God for what he is doing in the midst of this pandemic. If it had not been for this pandemic, some of us wouldn't be calling on the Lord as much. I thank God for the members of the New Beginning Church, those who have shown us love and support for our 16 years of ministry there. Thank you, New Beginning Church, and our family and friends. I thank God for working on the hearts of our children of the New Beginning Church children are wanting to be saved and when they die they want to go to heaven I just want to say thank you Lord I thank God for Kevin for Daniel for Aureli and for Symphony they have given their lives to Christ during this pandemic I thank you Lord and I don't take anything for granted I even thank God for the very air that we breathe. Because you know this is God's air. We take advantage of this air every single day, every single minute, every hour. This is God's air. I thank God for the air. But more importantly than that, I thank God for sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for this mean old world so that we would have an opportunity to go to heaven when we die. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you for bringing me, bringing me out. I just thank you, God, for just being so good to us. God has been good. Thank you, Lord. Help us in this. Thank you,
we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for blessing us again to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for keeping us and reminding us that you are God. God, we praise you. We honor you. We, we magnify you. We lift you up, Father God. We thank you for your mercy. Now, Father God in heaven, we thank you for this privilege of hearing your words. We ask you to speak to us bless us. Keep us focused. Keep us in your will and your way. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless us that we will hear from you this morning. Lord, I ask you to rescue me from me. Hide me behind Jesus the Christ, that his words will become real. His words, Father God, will become evident. His words will become true to somebody today. We pray, Father God, that you continue to walk with us. Bless us and go with us, Father God. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, and anointed name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. I just, I just. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for who he is and what he has already done. We praise him for just being God. And he is the good God. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us again here at the New Beginning Church from our remote location. Thank you for being a part of our service even on today. We're again in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 is where we are today. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. Matthew chapter, 30, chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through through 44. I am reading from the New King James Version. The New King James Version is where I'm reading. So please let me get your attention at this moment. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. When you found it, you will discover these words. <clears throat> but of that day 
and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, but my Father only. But as the days as but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage unto the day that Noah entered into the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them away. So also will this coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known the hour of the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. I want to talk about the unexpected hour. Yeah. The unexpected hour. The unexpected hour. The unexpected hour. Growing up as, in this country as a little boy, oftentimes we were given assignments before our parents drove to work or walked to work. Our assignments were very clear. Our assignments were usually boys. There were three boys before a girl showed up. Boys, when I get back home, these are the things that I want done. When I walk in the door, I want to smell Clorox. I want to smell Lysol. I want to smell the lemon smell that I get when cleaning has taken place. It was quite obvious that mama and daddy was in total agreement. They wanted to make sure that we understood our assignments and that we understood our assignments well. They made sure by going over it and repeating it over and over and over again. And every day, it was like they'd never said it before. Every day was a moment that they took advantage of repeating the instructions so the instructions would be clear. On some Mondays, they would leave by saying, first of all, I want you to sweep the ground outside. The reason why we had to sweep the ground is because we lived with a, a rice field in front of us and beans behind us, blackberry patches to the left side of us, and we live with cotton all around us. So it got dusty in the front of the house. It got dusty all around the house, and the grass refused to grow because of so many pesticides. So because the ground, the ground was bare, had no greenery on it, we had to sweep the ground in order to make sure that it was clean around the house. Then on a Tuesday, we would have the instruction not only to sweep the ground, but to also sweep the car porch. We didn't have a garage. We had a car porch, and we would have to sweep the car porch. And, and then after we sweep it, we would have to mop the car porch down. On Wednesday, we would have uh, a, a project similar to, I want every room swept and clean. And then we had, on Thursday, we had to make sure that we, we mopped every floor. And when we mopped every floor, we would take the clothes outside on the carport where the washer machine sat. And we didn't have a washer in a dryer. We had a washing machine that you had to reach down and dump the water out when you get through. <laughs> 
and then you would run it through this little little machine that, that will suck your clothes in and dry it somewhat, and then you would hang it on the line. Mom and daddy always made clear that they want these chores done before they got home. And we could just about tell when they're coming home because our street, our house, sit uh, about a half a mile, a quarter of a mile, I would say, off the main road. And the main road wasn't a highway. The main road was a blacktop road. And we would see when they turned down the road that they were coming because it was a dusty road. It was unpaved that led to our household. Let me just share with you, oftentimes the chores that we had been given would take us longer to perform than the time it would take them to leave the blacktop road and pull up in the house yard. So we couldn't time it just right. We would play all day and we would have fun all day and we would have fun right up to that moment. We, we, we didn't know because mama worked at a, a doctor's office. We didn't know when, when all of the patients were gone and whether she would come home early or come home late. We could pretty much tell when daddy's coming home because he usually got off right at dusk dark and, and we could tell when he's coming, but we couldn't ever tell when mama was coming. But they had left us instructions. And in these instructions that they left us, they would be very, very specific and very clear. When we got back, when they got back home, they wanted the smell of Clorox, Pine Sol, and Lysol. And when they walked in the door, if the smell didn't hit them, and you couldn't just take, take Clorox and Pine Sol and pour it all over, you had to make sure that you had swept, you had mopped, you had cleaned, you had washed dishes, you have taken care of the household chores, and you had done them well. Because they walk in almost with a white glove treatment and looking to see if we had done our chores. Well, sometimes they came home unexpectedly. Sometimes daddy didn't have to work till 8 or 9 o'clock at night. Sometimes mama wouldn't get off at 5.30 in the evening as usual. And when they turned down that dirty, dusty road, if our chores were undone, we would suffer the consequences. <laughs> Judgment would fall. Judgment would take place, and judgment would be swift, and it would be ever, everlasting. I can feel the pain yet today. I can feel it over 50 years later. I can feel it. I can. It's just like it was five minutes ago. Judgment was swift, and judgment was immediate. When we look at the text, we find a similar scenario, but to a greater degree. We find ourselves in the middle, right in the middle of the tribulation. We find ourselves talking about the fact that there will be wars and rumors of wars before Jesus come back for judgment. We find ourselves talking about the fact that not only will there be wars and rumors of wars, that people will wax cold and love and lawlessness will not be found anywhere. We find ourselves in the middle of this tribulation in this text, and we find that, that there will be men that will say that they are the Christ. There will be false prophets running rampant. There will not only be wars and rumors of wars, but nations will turn against nations. There will be earthquakes. There will be fires. There, there will be total sorrow taking place. And the Bible says this is the beginning of sorrows. This, this, this gospel has to be preached throughout all the world, and then the end will come. There will be abomination of desolation that will take place, there, and there will be a time when men would have to run and, and leave what they're doing. And if they're on the top of the rooftop, don't bother coming down, taking up your stuff. And, and if you're in the field, don't bother coming back home. Run to safety because the tribulation is at hand. 
The Bible teaches that there will be a day where false prophets will, will, will deceive many. Many men and women will be caught up because of false prophets and false Christs. And these false prophets and these false Christs, they will do great signs and great wonders. In other words, there will be a time when those who are not of God, they will do great things and great experts, and they, they will do great things and make people think that they are the real deal, but they will be false deceivers. They will be false prophets and false Christ. It says to us that if they say that there he is in the desert, don't go looking for him. It says if he's in the inner room, don't go and look to see them. Because they are false Christ and false prophets. Well, last week he applied, he applied this, this coming of Jesus Christ. He paralleled it to, the, to the, the parable of the fig tree. He talked about the fact that, that he sees the fig tree as we see the fig tree. And when it began to bloom and to sprout and to blossom from the limbs... We know that summer is near. He says when these things happen that I've just listed, that there will be pestilence, there will be, there will be earthquakes, there will be earthquakes in various places. He says when these things happen and the powers of heaven are shaken until the sun, the moon, and the stars refuse to give their light. Then you will know as the fig tree gives away his his blossoms, you will know that the Son of Man's coming is near. I said to you in this particular text that, that the coming of the Son of Man, he will come in his glory, but his glory will not be one that we will celebrate. He will come in the midst of the tribulation, and when he comes after the tribulation, he will find us doing what we ought not be doing. I said to you, I said to some of you, you don't have to go. I, I said, you don't have to stay. You don't have to be a part of this tribulation. You can get out of here in the rapture. I want to be in that number, and I guarantee you I will be in that number where I will be raptured up with the Lord, and I won't have to go through this tribulation. But it, it gives us warning that if you're not saved, you need to be born again. If you have not confessed Jesus as your personal Savior, you need to take advantage of this opportunity. So he says in verses 36 through 44 that uh, that day and that hour no man knows. That day and that hour no man, not even the angels in heaven knows when the Son of Man will return. He says, Jesus himself don't even know because only God in heaven knows. You see, Jesus, Jesus has, has, has brought upon us what is known as the hyperstatic union. And this hyperstatic union is a moment where we understand that God is and Jesus are one. Where Jesus is just as much God as God and Jesus is just as much man as man. We have this hypostatic union, and in Jesus, when we have Jesus as God, as the, the God himself, the God Jesus, the Son of God, as God himself, we know that he is omnipotent. Yes, yes. He has all power. Mm -hmm. We know that Jesus is omnipresent meaning that he's all places at the same time. And we know that he's omniscient, meaning that he's omniscience. He knows all and he sees all. We know that Jesus, Jesus as God, Jesus is sovereign. He does what he wants to do when he wants to do it, the way he wants to do it. But here we find Jesus as the son of man, and he has eliminated, has, has walked away from his sovereignty. He has walked away from his omnip omnipotence. He has walked away from his omniscient. 
He's walked away, and now Jesus, being just as much God as God, just as much man as man, he is highlighted as the son of man, meaning that he is limited in this particular verse. He's limited because he no longer knows all when it comes to the rapture. He doesn't know all when it comes to the tribulation. Only God, the angels don't know it. Only God in heaven knows it. It says to us, it says to us that there's been a great separation from the Jesus as God as we know. It says to us that Jesus is not omniscient because he doesn't know all at this point. And it says that, that it is characterized similar to the days of Noah. He says, but in the days of Noah, as Jesus is coming back and he's coming to judge this world, he will come at an unexpected hour. He parallels Jesus coming to the days of Noah. He says, as the day, as in the days of Noah, so shall the son of man's coming be. For in the days before the flood, they were eating, they were drinking. They were marrying and giving in marriage until Noah entered the, into the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Let me just share with you today. Jesus says there has lived a day. He brings up the record. He brings up the show that when Noah entered into the ark, Noah shut the door. The men didn't believe that it was going to rain. That's right. I came today to let you know it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. It's going to rain. Noah preached the same message for over 100 years. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain like never before. They didn't believe him. And because they didn't believe him, the doors were shut. The flood came and they all drowned it. The Bible says the coming of the Son of Man will be on this wise. He talks about the fact that they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were giving in marriage until Noah entered into the ark. Now, nothing's wrong with eating and drinking and marrying and giving into marriage. The picture that he's trying to paint to us today is the fact that men are going about doing the regular old mundane things. They are doing what they normally do. They are acting like they normally act. Let me just share with you, even during this pandemic, men, some of them have not changed. They're still, doing, they're still living their lives the way they used to live it. They're living their lives the way they used to carrying out. They are. They have not changed their, their mannerism. They have not changed their worship style. They have not changed their lifestyle. They have not changed what they do in their lives. They are giving in marriage. They are doing what they normally do as if they got a lot of time. Let me just share to you, with you today, my dears, Time is not in your hand. Time is winding up. Time is not on your side. Just because you are a child, time is not on your side. If you are young, time is not on your side. And definitely, if you are old, time is not on your side. They were doing the things that they normally do. They were partying. I see even during this pandemic, people are just partying like it's 1999. They're parting and they're shaking their hands like they just don't care. They're throwing their hands up there. They are parting in the midst of a pandemic. They have not changed anything. The judgment is going to come one day. Jesus is coming back one day. Jesus' second coming will take place one day. He goes on to not only say that they lost their lives in the flood. They didn't believe until after the flood had come. Then it says the Son of Man coming will be just like this. It's an unexpected hour. It's a moment we don't know about. 
I just want to let you know that the rapture can take place right now. Nothing else has to happen. No other prophecy has to be fulfilled. The rapture can take place right now. You must be. You got to be. You have to be born again. You need to be born again. You need to know Jesus in the departing of your sin. You need to get to know him right now. Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Yes. Verse number 40, it gives the analogy of men and women doing their normal thing. The first analogy he gives is the analogy, analogy of Noah. He says that people will be giving in marriage, people will be getting married, people will be drinking, and they, they, will be, they, they will not only be drinking, they will be doing normal things as normal people. Not giving sight, not, not even being concerned about what Jesus is doing and what Jesus is prepared to do. Then it says in verse number 40, then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other will be left. There will be, verse number 41, there will be two women grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other will be left. It tells us that it doesn't matter who we work with. It doesn't matter what persona people put on. Sooner or later, those who are with God will be separated from those who are not with him. You need to be born again. You need to get to know him today. You need to obey him today. Let me tell you, there will be two men in the same field. One will be taken and the other will be left. One will be taken to judgment and one will be left to go through the millennium. There will be two women grinding at the mill. One will be taken into, into judgment. The other will be left to go through the millennium. Mm -hmm. Verse 42 declares, now you watch therefore. You watch for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. Yes, he tells us, those of us who are born again, those of us who are saved to always be watchful. Mm -hmm. Always watch what God is doing. It says to those who will be saved during the great tribulation, be watchful. Whatever you do, be advised that these things are happening yes, and they will come to pass. Yes, you don't know when the Lord is coming. You don't know when the Lord is going to crack the sky. You don't know when God is going to rapture us up and you neither do you know when he's coming back in the second coming. Yes, we just don't have the knowledge of it. We don't know when he's coming back. We don't know when he's coming to rapture up his church, and we don't know when the millennium will come, but one thing we do know, those who are born again will go with him. Yes, Lord. Those of us who know Jesus will not be left behind. Verse 43 says, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief is coming. If the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have been prepared. He, he, he would have watched it and would not allow his house to be broken in. If the master of the house had known when the thief was coming, the thief wouldn't have been able to thieve. The thief wouldn't have been able to take because the master of the house would have been wise enough to be on top of things, the master of the house would have stopped the thief from taking. Yes. I say to you today that you be, need to be watchful. The Bible teaches that you can't take over the household unless you bind the strong man. I oftentimes say that it would be a regretful day if somebody could walk in my house and just take over while I'm here. It would be a regretful day because if you come to this house, if you come to take over this house, you got to first bind the strong man. Every man ought to be the man of his house where when they come in to disavow this house, they can't get in. Yes. They can't take over because they must first bind the strong man. Whenever thieves and robbers go into the house, they want to make sure if there's a man there, they bind him first. 
When I'm saying to you, we don't know when the thief and the robbers will come. But Jesus parallels this thief and this robber to the coming of the Son of Man. We just don't know the day nor the hour. We don't know the day or the hour in which Jesus is coming back, so we need to be watchful. We need to be watchful at the point where we understand not only do we watch, but we occupy. Not only do we look for his coming, not only do we observe his coming, but we need to work until he gets back. Mm -hmm. We need to be on top of things until he gets back. We need to make sure we work out our salvation. It doesn't say work out your soul salvation. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling mm -hmm. out of respect to the holy and righteous God. You need to watch. You need to be... Ready. Look at verse number 44 and I'll leave you alone. Therefore, you also be ready. Therefore, you also be ready. You ought to be getting ready. You ought to be made ready. You, you ought to be on top of getting ready. You ought to be about getting ready. You ought to get ready because one of these days, Jesus is coming back. Yes. And he's coming like a thief in the night. One of day, we, these days, Jesus is coming back. And he's coming like he came, like the flood came in the days of Noah. Yes. One of these days, Jesus is coming back. And when Jesus comes back, he is coming. And when you look at the days of Noah, you can draw a parallel to Jesus coming back. Yes. One of these days, Jesus is coming back. And the Bible says one will be taken and the other will be left. Two men working on the same job, one taken and the other one left. Two women working on the same job, one taken and the other one left. Yes. Two persons in the household, one taken and the other one left. The text declares we ought to be ready. Therefore, you also be ready. Yes. For the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. Son of man is coming back and he's coming first of all to rapture up the church. First Thessalonians chapter four, verses 13 through 18 says it like this. I have you not ignorant, my brother. He says, be informed, be advised, my brother. I don't want you to be ignorant, my brother. Those, of you, those who have died in Christ Jesus, don't get overly concerned. Don't weep like those who have no hope. For the same Jesus that left here on the cloud, he's coming back on a cloud. He's coming to get a church without a spot or a wrinkle. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18 says that those who died with this lively hope, that Jesus died, he was buried, he rose again and trusted Jesus as his savior. Those who have that lively hope, they can believe in the fact that one of these days Jesus is coming to rapture up the church. I won't be here in the tribulation. I'll be out of here before the tribulation comes because I believe the story and I trust that that story is the only story that will get me to heaven when I die. You don't have to be here in the tribulation. You don't have to go through all this stuff. It's already bad like it is now. I do not and you should not want to live in hell and go to hell and live in hell from now on. Give it up today. Trust Jesus as your savior. It is an unexpected hour that he's coming back. It is a time that we don't know the time nor the day. Not even the angels in heaven know the time or the day, but Jesus himself neither know the time or the day. Only the Father in heaven knows the time and the day. He's coming back. It's an unexpected hour. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I live for him. I'm so glad that I walk with him. I'm so glad I've given my life to him because I'm going to be glad when Jesus shows up. I'm going to, it's going to be a great hallelujah day for some of us. Those of us who are saved, those of us who are born again, it's going to be a great getting up morning when the trump of God sounds. The dead in Christ shall be raptured up first. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him in midair and we will forever be with the Lord. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18 says, Comfort one another with these things. We will forever be with the Lord. We will forever be with the Lord. I'm so glad that I'm satisfied. I'm so glad that God has blessed. I'm so glad that Jesus has been offered up as a sanctified sanctification unto the Lord. He is the only one who has satisfied God. He gave his life on a skull hill called Calvary. He paid the price for you and for me. He redeemed us. He, he gave his life. He not only bought us back, but he brought us back. Jesus, the son of God, he died over 2,000 years ago. They nailed him tight to the cross. They riveted his feet, nailed his hand, lifted him up on the hill called Calvary. He gave up the ghost, I tell you. He died for you and he died for me. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb. They laid Jesus Christ in a borrowed tomb that day. Yes. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. Early that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus took his head wrap off, laid it neatly in the tomb. It's an indication that he's coming back again. The same Jesus that left here on a cloud. He's coming back on a cloud. Jesus the Christ is coming back to get us who trust in the story. It's going to take us away from here. And when he takes us away from here, we don't have any sorrows. We don't have any pains. We don't have any trouble because Jesus is has taken us, and he will take us to another plane. Amen. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. I know you've done some wrong. I have done some wrong also. But Jesus, in his amazing grace, has blessed me. One more time. He's given me another chance. He's given me chances over and over and over again. But the greatest chance Jesus has ever given me is the fact that he allowed me to be born again. And you can be born again right here, right now. You can be saved. You can be caught up in this rapture where Jesus will rapture his church and take us out of here. And the Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. If you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. You can get to know him just as you are, you can get to know Jesus. The door of the church is open. All you have to do is simply believe the story. How Jesus died over 2,000 years ago. How he was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. If you can just believe this story, you can be saved right now. If you can trust this story to get you to heaven, you can be born again right now. The door is open. All you have to do is repeat after me and invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your Savior. And he will come right in. Will you join me in prayer? Just repeat after me and invite Christ in. Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. I 
that are coming to my life. And make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer, you are now born again. We believe that you're born and you're on your way to heaven. There may be some of you who've already been born again, who's already saved. I, sit to, I submit to you to walk with God. And if you're struggling with sin like I do, I want to pray with you, pray for you. And we have prayed for many, even during this pandemic effort, a pandemic era. We want to pray with you that God will continue to walk with you. If there are some of you who are in between church homes, or you don't have a church home. Foxes have holes. That's their home. Birds of the air have nests. That's their home. Every person needs a church home. Every person needs a pastor. Every person needs a, a under shepherd to walk with them. And, and cover you. Especially during this awful, grateful time. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. I recommend the New Beginning Church where we are lifting Jesus and he is drawing all men unto himself. Please inbox me and let me know if you need to join the New Beginning Church. We will welcome you and celebrate your joining. If you received Jesus Christ, please inbox me or message me and let me know that you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Let me know that you have, you are now ready <laughs> and you made ready. If you just need prayer, inbox me and let me know you need prayer. And we'll be willing to pray with you and pray for you. As we're looking forward to the day where we can get together again and, and celebrate Jesus in the assembly of God. Amen. And thank God. We're looking forward to the day when Jesus cracks the sky and the dead in Christ shall rise first and those who remain will be caught up together with him <laughs> in the air. Thank you so much for joining us here today at the New Beginning Church. Thank you for being a part of our service. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. It's time. You can give. You can give by by three means. You can give by Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. Or you can give by Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can give by P.O. Box, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. We'll be glad and excited to celebrate with you as we have today. On Sunday morning, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. is our Sunday school time. Please join us in celebration of the King of Kings and the Lords of Lords. The Lord of Lords. Please continue to join us as you have today at 1045 a.m. for our regular worship service. We'll 
be glad to have you as a part of our worship service. And then join us on Wednesday, every Wednesday at 7.20 p.m. Every Wednesday at 7.20 p.m. for our Bible study. Again, thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. We're so glad that you've come to be a part of our service. And we look forward to, to seeing you, hearing from you, and being a part of all that, that God is doing with us and through us. Again, thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank God for, God, for, for the great people at the New Beginning Church for celebrating and helping us to celebrate 16 years of appreciation for Sister Davis and for me at the New Beginning Church. Uh, we had a great time through the drive through where many have come to share with us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you so much for, for being a part of the setup, the breakdown. Thank you for being a part of the great celebration. Thank you to her ministry for, for continuing to be thoughtful of Sister Davis and me. It's been 16 years. Let's go forward to make several more years in honoring the great conquering King of Calvary, Jesus himself. Also, I want to thank you, our friends and our family members who join us every Wednesday and every Sunday on this broadcast. Thank you so much for, for your active support, for continuing to move as God had optioned you to move with your gifts and with your attendance. Thank you so much. We here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are, lift, as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for keeping us and blessing us. We thank you for all that you do, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for Jesus the Christ. Lord, we thank you that he's coming back to rapture up the church. We thank you, Lord, that he is, he is God and he's God alone. We thank you, Lord, that he is the one we look forward to seeing. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Now, Lord, we pray that you bless this message. The lives will be changed. Hope will be renewed. Salvation will be given. We thank God for all that you do. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Now unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory and dominion. Until we meet again, let us say together, Amen, Amen, and Amen. God bless you, and God keep you, is our prayer.